Hello, all. It is I, your goth mother, Madame Goth, the Possum Queen, she who poked the Kiwi and lived, discount contra points, and monarchy troll. About a year ago, I came to you from this very apartment to discuss the aesthetics of royalty, and it got a number of views. But you may have noticed a lack of proper monarchy criticism in it, and here's why. Criticizing the monarchy as a whole wasn't the intent of the royal aesthetic. The intent was to discuss why the monarchy was appealing to the masses. And I understand that now. Appearances can be deceiving, though. As an older, wiser, non-binary woman whom royalists hate, it's time for me to take down the monarchy for the flawed institution it really is. Remember, though, to not harass anyone I mention in this video and to not spread hate in the comments. And with that, You goddamn motherfuckers! Hello, fellow cunts. It is me, Cunty McCuntgoth, aka Flower Gothic. Today, I'm going to show you why the monarchy actually fucking sucks. immensely egalitarian person, mostly because I'm a borderline anarcho-communist, but even in my social democrat days, I didn't understand how social welfare countries allowed an obviously hierarchical institution to still exist. The monarchy is a position of privilege you gain by being born! Now, you may ask, does privilege actually give you opportunities that are much harder for others? Yes. For example, many royals attended private, prestigious schools with tuitions of over $20,000 per term. Now, I don't think the tuition of a school accounts for its quality, but these schools have a stellar reputation. Let's take a look at them. Many British royals and aristocrats, including Will and Harry, went to Eton College, an all-boys boarding school that is considered to be very elite. 20% of their students, as of 2014, receive at least some financial assistance, but it still has plenty of booze traditions. Only boys between 13 and 18 attend Eton. The application process begins at age 10, when prospective students take an online test before taking an in-person test and being interviewed at Eton. According to the school's website, each house is home to about 50 students of every age. According to Eaton's website, the houses are run by a professional housemaster who supervises the boys and a hired dame who supervises the house's full-time staff. Some of the houses employ private chefs to feed their residents, what the fuck, while others send their students to the school's dining hall. Every student has a private room, according to Eaton's website. The inn's daily uniform consists of a black tailcoat, white tie, waistcoat, and striped pants, according to BBC. A top hat is added for special occasions. But that's not all! Other schools frequented by royals include, but are not limited to, Sweden's and Skilda Gymnasiet one of the highest-ranked secondary schools in the country, and plenty of rich folks have sent their children there. Hell, the CEO of Ancient More Labor Abuse went there! Denmark's Oligod Gymnasium? There's not much information about it in English, but after digging through some sources via Google Translate, it looks like one of those elite schools that's trying to reinvent itself for the 21st century. Other alumni include politicians, engineers, and prominent Nazi lawyer Elia Pontopapadem. Norway's Kristelig Gymnasium is a private CHRISTIAN school that ranks the highest in standardized tests. 
a bunch of conservative politicians in the country also went there. Interesting. Fuck, I wasted all my time ranting about the Scandies. Um, lots of royals from smaller countries go to boarding schools in Switzerland that are deemed exclusive. The princesses of the Netherlands go to Christchurch to Nazion Zulovic, one of the best schools in the country. Other British royals went to- Wait, I wrapped up! I have been asked to refrain from continuing my discussion of elite schools. And I apologize for getting riled up. Moving on. Prince George is easily the most notorious example of fame from birth. When Kate was pregnant with him, everyone in the media was talking about it. They made bets on the baby's name, predicted how much the economy would boom because of the baby, and created a fucking Wikipedia page before he was even born! I had a friend receipt to this madness, as I was 13 at the time. But even then, I didn't care! It was just a child! But then again, I was having a whole rom-com thing with my then crush at the time, so I had bigger problems. Furthermore, growing up privileged gives you connections that are much harder to get if you're 100% peasant blood, like me. What kind of connections? How about one to let you become a commissioned officer in your 20s? Or one that lets you intern for your country's most important embassy, no questions asked? Or one that will allow you to marry the daughter of a politician involved in Argentina's dirty war without consequences. While finalizing the script for this video, I was stressing over potential internships I could get in the fall because after this spring, I only have one full semester left, thus allowing me to switch to part-time, student-wise, <laughs> to gain experience in the media production field. But where should I intern? What should I use to build my portfolio? How can I have a solid resume when I had to essentially take a gap term and void most of my freshman year due to an abusive relationship I entered that caused naive old me to be coerced into doing things that I wouldn't even do to this day? My point is, it seems that royals have easier means of getting opportunities that I would have to work my ass off to get. You may be saying, okay, the monarchy is a position of privilege, but good royals don't take advantage of it. But here's the thing, whether intentionally or not, they do. From misuse of finances to breaking the law, there have been many a scandal from abuse of power in the monarchy. Here are my favorite ones from my research. In 2012, Crown Princess Metta Malit of Norway assisted a couple in obtaining two children via surrogacy. Surrogacy is illegal in most of Europe, so a surrogate mother had to be located in India, where the laws at the time made commercial surrogacy laws exploitable. Regardless of your stance on surrogacy, if your job is to represent a country, Shouldn't you abide by the laws of said country too? Looking at you, Crystal Smith! Spain has had a history of the royals having dubious finances. Former King Juan Carlos allegedly had offshore bank accounts and got involved with a high-speed rail project in Saudi Arabia. But wait, the royal fandom says, Juan Carlos has been ousted. Felipe and Letizia are now in charge, and they don't have shady financial dealings. Perhaps they don't. I don't know. Two hours of digging led me to nothing. But they aren't saints. In March of 2016, a text conversation between Felipe, Letizia, and Javier Lopez Madrid was leaked. Who is Javier Lopez Madrid, you may ask? Lopez Madrid was the CEO of Bankia and was accused of using company funds for personal use. After the accusations came to light, Letizia and Felipe texted Lopez Madrid. The following is a translated reenactment. I 
I wrote to you when the article about the cards came out in the LOC shit? And you know what I think, Javier. We know who you are. You know who we are. We know each other. We love each other. We respect each other. The rest is bullshit. Kisses, yoga buddy. Miss you. I really appreciate it. In the future, I will be extremely careful. We live in a very difficult country, and I will be even more aware of my conduct. Me too. I'll join the chat, but I prefer to chat with you sometime without electronic or telephone intermediation. Do you wanna go out to eat tomorrow? Hugs. This was about four months after Felipe became king, by the way. Hello? Oh, oh my. Yes, yes, um, thank you. Breaking news! Finalizing the script for this video, Catalonian rapper Pablo Hassel was arrested for referring to the former Spanish king Juan Carlos in offensive terms, praising some terrorist groups, and accusing the Guardia Civil of torturing and murdering migrants. Which, number one, as we've established, Juan Carlos is a corrupt motherfucker. Also, Freedom of expression exists. Number two, the quote unquote terrorist groups in question were left wing militias, such as the Grappo, the ETA, the Red Army Faction, and Terra Ilure. And yes, I have disagreements with their methods and some of their values, but these people are comrades. They know that our current capitalist imperialist system is broken and doesn't benefit anyone! Except the rich, including the monarchs. Number 3! In 2015, the Council of Europe published a report documenting the abuse migrants faced at the hands of Guardia Civil, including truncheon blows, verbal intimidation, and basically putting migrants in prisons. Hassel's accusation does not come without evidence. We here at Flower Gothic Incorporated denounced the arrest of Pablo Hassel as it was based upon censoring his views. He is not a threat to the people at large. I think he is incredibly based. Drop the fucking charges! Speaking of document leaks, Elizabeth II was named in the Paradise Papers as having offshore bank accounts. This isn't necessarily illegal, but there are some interesting data. Elizabeth's private estate, the Duchy of Lancaster, invested over $7 million in a Cayman Islands fund, which in turn invested in a company that owned Bright House, which was basically the love child of Circuit City and Rent-A-Center, with added corruption as they Allegedly! took advantage of vulnerable consumers and engaged in tax evasion. Allegedly! Elizabeth was not aware of the Bright House investment, but the investments were not shown on the Duchy's annual financial reports. Elizabeth herself, as well as Charles, are problematic to say the least. They have used their power in the past to block legislation, such as the Military Actions Against Iraq Bill in 1999, as that would have stripped Elizabeth of her power to authorize Iraqi airstrikes. Charles and Elizabeth have been explicitly asked in the past to consent to certain legislations being passed. What kind of legislation? All kinds of legislation, from the ratification of the European Constitution, to the authorization of identity cards, to establishing a maritime aid network. So much for being nothing more but a neutral figurehead. Oh, that reminds me. Marge Simpson, I, I mean Marguerite II, 
who is Queen of Denmark as of this taping, has said some Islamophobic things in the past. I mentioned this last year, but let's go more into depth about it. In a 2016 interview, Margrethe expressed right-wing sentiments on immigration, stating that we probably thought that kind of thing would go away on its own. If you walk the streets of Copenhagen and drink the municipal water and took the municipal bus, you would probably become a Dane in a short time. <sighs> it was so obvious to us, and that's why we thought it must be so for those who settled and lived here. That was not the case. We have learned that. It is not a law of nature that you become a Dane by living in Denmark. You do not necessarily do that. The pot in the pot needs to be changed a bit, I think. You can keep your roots, but you have to make sure that the soil is fresh. A reminder, 2016 was right after the peak of the European migrant crisis. In 2015, there were around three to five asylum applicants per 10,000 people in Denmark. The total population of Denmark in October 2015 was around 5,699,220. For the sake of simplicity, we'll use the median and assume four people per 10,000 applied for asylum in Denmark. Four divided by 10,000 is 0.0004, or 0.04%. When you multiply that by the October 2015 population estimate, you get about 2,280 people. The population is smaller than my high school. Stop overreacting and being a racist, Marguerite! Of course, no king or queen was a saint. Albert of Monaco was a playboy with two bastard children. Carl Gustav allegedly cheated on his wife, especially in the 90s. Willem Alexander canceled his big fat Greek vacation during a pandemic after he got there. Belgium. Ah, Belgium. Let's talk about my favorite scandal. And my favorite, I mean, most emotionally scarring and terrible. Before he became the King of the Belgians, their wording not mine, Albert II had a years-long affair with married Baroness Sibylle de Saint's Longchamps, which resulted in the birth of a girl, Delphine. Her true parentage was initially kept under wraps, and she was given her mother's husband's last name, Boal. In 1999, an 18-year-old Flemish student wrote an unauthorized biography on Albert's wife, the then-queen Paola, which contained a statement alleging that Albert had a daughter out of wedlock. The Belgian press managed to locate Sibylle and Delphine, but both initially refused to comment. Albert, on the other hand, made a rather cryptic reference to them in his 1999 Christmas speech. Christmas is a time for each of us to think of our family, of the happy periods, but also the difficult times. The Queen and I remember very happy times, but also the crisis that we experienced more than 30 years ago. Together we could, over a long time, overcome those difficulties and recover a deep understanding and love for each other. This period was recalled to us recently. We don't wish to dwell on that subject, which belongs to our private lives, but if if those who encounter similar difficulties today could get some encouragement from our own experiences, we would be really happy. Albert and Paola did have marital problems in the 1960s, but many interpreted that to be a confirmation of Delphine's parentage. Then came 2005. Delphine claimed in an interview that she was indeed Albert's daughter. Allegedly! But probably, let's be honest. <laughs> she was told of her true parentage in her teens, but was disowned by Albert at 33, when he said, and I quote, Never call me again. You are not my daughter. 
Unsurprisingly, Albert denied being Delphine's father, and since he was the king, he had legal immunity. So very little could be done until Albert abdicated in 2013 for health reasons. This made him lose his immunity, and Delphine summoned him and two of his children in June of that year for DNA samples. The case was thrown out four years later due to, quote unquote, insufficient evidence. But she appealed, and in November of 2018, the court ordered Albert to provide DNA for a paternity test. He refused. The court ordered him to pay 5,000 euros a day until he provided DNA. He eventually caved in. And on January 27, 2020, guess what? The DNA tests confirmed that Albert was indeed Delphine's biological father. Who would have guessed? The love child is not the problem here. The problem is that he extensively denied paternity to the point where it was all but confirmed and essentially deprived Delphine of the truth she always wanted by abusing his immunity and prosecution to run away from his problems instead of facing them. <sighs> okay, sad bit over. Small but funny scandal before we move on, Metallica Gate. In July of 2019, Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden and her husband Daniel, aka the himbo brought their then seven-year-old daughter to a Metallica concert in Gothenburg. The public health authority required concert attendees to be at least 13 because children have sensitive ears that can be damaged due to loud music. Like live Metallica! Now, the angry royalists watching this are probably screaming that THEY WANT PROTECTIVE HEADPHONES! And she's a Metallica fan! Aren't you happy to have a heavy metal red princess? One, the latter statement does not apply to me because I'm American. Number two, regardless of how big a Metallica fan Estelle is, her parents broke a law and got special treatment to bring her, a seven-year-old, to a concert every other child would get turned away from. Did Victoria and Daniel act out of malice here? No. I'll probably get pushed back for conceding, but y'all, this is a 1 out of 10 on the scandal scale. The Swedes have done much worse shit. <laughs> Besides, they're all blissfully unaware of how much people want them gone. <laughs> If you disagree with my two previous points, it might be because you're drowning in the royal aesthetic. I'll keep this short as I covered this in detail last year. I only bring it up because it's my show and I do what I want. So there's an aesthetic to royalty that doesn't exist in modern celebrities because they're long-lasting institutions that have some degree of alleged noble blood in them. Now, I know I have some bias, as I am 100% peasant blood, but noble blood is bullshit! The House of Windsor, for those who haven't taken a proper European history course, was originally the House of Saxe, Coburg, and Gotha. What changed this? World War I. Because of anti-German sentiment, King George V chose to change his family's obviously German name to something much more British. Windsor. Hell, they weren't even of British descent until George's children, most of his children, married people of British blood. And that's the tea, sis. And now it's time to bash the Swedes again. I should really get a Swede bashing stick for all this. The House of Bernadotte is of primarily French descent. It was founded by Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte, a French man who was, from what I've gathered, middle class. He rose the ranks in the military during the French Revolution and became a marshal of the French Empire. Then, in 1810, he was asked to become the heir to the Swedish throne. He accepted and became Charles XIV John in 1818. 
And to further show how not really Swedish the Bernadottes are, it took until 2010 for someone with Swedish blood on both sides to marry into the family! 2010! By the way, maintaining a degree of royal blood is a toxic belief in superiority over others and can, and will, result in inbreeding and pedigree collapse. Don't believe me? Ask Charles II of Spain, or Ferdinand I of Austria. Alright! Their dead as a direct result of generations of inbreedings from a toxic belief that royal blood exists! Silly me. You may say they bring a sense of unity, but that's something that happens in many fandoms. You find a group to belong to, and that makes you happy. But are they stable? If you mean in longevity, sure. But I'd argue that the mystique of the royals makes them seem much more stable than they actually are. We never see what happens behind closed doors, and who knows, maybe the royal family secretly can't stand one another when they're not in public. In fact, that was one of the messages I wanted to express in my April video. Regardless of what you see in interviews, engagements, and even the occasional memoir, you're seeing a sanitized image of the royals. There are a few testimonials from people who met the royals, and while I cannot 100% verify their accuracy, they can paint a different picture of them. Let me remove the mystique by sharing some of them. With the St. Andrews thing, there was an article a few years back about St. Andrews quickly deleting a university forum topic about William falling asleep in lectures. It did not escape his fellow students that he would arrive late into a lecture, evidently tired from party the night before, and would sleep through most all of it. The article itself got quickly erased. I know someone who was at St. Andrews at the time. It was common knowledge around town that Kate was seeing William before the press found out. And she described Kate as being rude and very full of herself. It's worth pointing out that she was also fairly uncomplimentary about William. A bit of a twat, and so she described him. A very good friend of mine he used to see William and Kate a lot at Bougie's. Boyfriend worked in PR, so I used to get invited to a lot of the events at places like Bougie's, Mahiki, and so on. She said similar things about Kate, and that William was a very heavy drinker. Both William and Harry are, apparently. I know people who have met Kate, so it's only secondhand stuff from people who work in businesses she has visited, antiques shops mostly, and she's, well, okay. She's polite but not overly so, tall and thin but not a stunning beauty, and overall just not terribly memorable or charismatic. Just quite ordinary, really. Being to a conference that Queen Beatrix attended some years ago, her security was stupid and very lewd. They locked up the conference participants in the hotel while she was there. We were not allowed to leave, and nobody asked us if we were okay with that before the conference. They didn't search anybody who came to the hotel, nor our rooms, so locking up people wouldn't have helped. We would all have had the possibility to kill her if we wanted. Nobody tried it. She was also very impolite and didn't greet the conference pa participants. She only pushed a button to launch a dictionary, but didn't say a single word to us PFs. But on a flight to London Heathrow of Louis and Tessie some years ago, when she was still down to earth, they were both nice. What did the people, at least five people, did the boarding because they wanted to see them. They carried their own hell and luggage and they both sat in coach. No idea why Tessie thinks the Luxus should fund her luxury life and her business class tickets when she actually flew coach while married to Louis! I met Fergie a few years ago at a fundraiser for a cancer charity. I know she's a train wreck and greedy and a big ol' hot mess, but in person she was surprisingly charming, funny, and polite. So without the royal mystique, what are these people? Celebrities. And like every celebrity, they deserve to be mocked. The Brits get a shit ton of mockery. So let me direct your attention 
once again to Sweden and introduce you to one of my new favorite things ever. Hey Baba Reba. Hey Baba Reba was a Swedish sketch comedy show that aired in the mid 2000s and was most known for its brutal depiction of the royal family and the familian segments. And I live for it. Sadly, I haven't been able to find a subtitled version yet, but as long as you have context about the family, you'll be good. Victoria is a controlling stuck-up, Carl Philip is a man-child, Madeline is a cocaine addict, okay, that one might have actually been true at the time, and so on. I've been advised that I tend to go on and on and on about this topic, so I'll simply enlighten y'all with my favorite family and segment, Dirty Dancing. Daniel wants to attract more business for his gym, so he proceeds to market the shit out of it, much to Victoria's disdain. While he's on his marketing spree, Victoria heads over to the gym to practice being seductive in order to get into his pants or something. Uh, my Swedish is still very rusty. <laughs> Daniel returns, then... well... So, uh, come on in. How you call your lover boy? Come here, lover boy. And if he doesn't answer? Oh, lover boy. And if he still doesn't answer? I simply say, baby. Oh, baby. My sweet baby. You're... This is such comedy gold, I can't even. I won't spoil the rest of the skit though. It's on YouTube. Watch it. Watch it now, you cunts. Though now since we're back on the topic of Sweden. I'm sorry that I heaped undeserving praise on Princess Sophia last year. I completed the video before I looked deeper into her past and learned of the shittier shit she did. Like, name her third son, Julian. Fuck you! From my initial research back in spring of 2020, I thought her only sins were that she was in a racy reality TV show and did a few glamour model shoots. But oh boy! Allegedly! There's softcore porn photo shoots while underage, taking credit for co-founding a charity she happened to start when she started seeing Carl Phillip, Keeping ties with said charity, even though it's not primarily active in Sweden, and more! You don't hear about most of this shit. The Bernadotes have scrubbed her past off the face of the earth, which is rather... suspicious. Princess Sophia has had a number of summer jobs, including working at a sports shop as a waitress and in a plastics factory. Since her teenage years, the princess has visited and worked as a volunteer and aid worker in South Africa, Senegal, and Ghana. In 2005, Princess Sophia began studying accounting, specializing in business development at the New York Institute of English and Business. The princess is also a certified yoga instructor, which she trained for in New York. She worked as a yoga instructor at Yoga for the People, New York. Granted, like Mary, Sophia is not at all a classy person, but at least Mary didn't do softcore porn while underage. If you want, I'll dedicate a video to Sophia. There's probably more than what I have already uncovered. Crown Princess Metamerit of Norway also had a shady past. Her drug addict day, single motherhood, etc. are over and she has shown remorse for her rebellious face. But allegedly, and this is probably borderline conspiracy, the Norwegian royal family went to all her old friends to collect any scandalous photos and videos of her. They destroyed them all, which, well, I'm all for reinventing yourself. Hell, I've done it before. But the bad times, the rebellious times? I'm all for reinventing yourself. 
I've erased most, if not all, of my pre-Fall of 2019 social media postings. I've deleted almost all of my 2018 and 2019 pictures. But the bad times, the rebellious times, they happen. And you can't pretend like they never did. Now, let's go. Excuse me. <laughs> let's go. Fine. I'll talk a bit about Prince Andrew. Andrew's ties with Jeffrey Epstein forced him to step back from his duties in 2019 after a disastrous interview with the BBC, where he not only contradicts people who worked for him, but made bullshit explanations of not having sex with a minor. <laughs> I highly recommend you watch the interview. It is so fucking terrible. To this day, he, and by extension, the Windsors, haven't directly admitted to any wrongdoing. What can I say but yikes? So what's the point of royals? I can't think of anything except to be mocked. All privileged people deserve to be mocked, in my opinion. Billionaires, trust fund babies, we must mock them all! I know I say this as someone whose family is upper middle class, but I don't mind being mocked. It just numbs the pain! Royals are nothing but reality TV stars with the pseudo job of public relations. They are famous for existing and have life handed to them. And that's hilarious! Besides, if and when the monarchies vanish, the royals won't. And I would love to see them try to survive in the real world. That's the show! Don't forget to like and subscribe! Good night! Oh, uh -huh.